once it's approved, goes into the main database. That's where all of us, all of you, um, uh, the, the police, the higher po police, o police officers, NTSA, Kenna, Cora, others can use an internet browser like um, Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever you use to access the database and uh, run different types of analysis. So that's uh, up to this point part so the first um, so whatever you see left of test server is the police um, falls into the police portfolio the police collects the crash and then this part is you can you utilize the data to uh, answer key safety questions now you're going to uh, ask me um, it probably will take some time until all police officers will have a mobile application, a, a tool, an electronic tool that is accurate, picks up the G GP, uh, uh, X and Y of the crash point, etc. So what would happen in your transition? Um, at this point, they have two ways of entering data. They can enter data using the mobile application or they can have their um, uh, paper copy, or their observation about the crash, go to the office, use the web application to enter the data, and then uh, it will sit in the, in the lobby, reviewed by a senior officer, gets approved, uh, and they have a hierarchy of uh, approval. Then the, the crash goes into the database and uh, users can access through the, um, an inter internet browser, and uh, do the analyses. Okay, so that's the whole story. Our focus is on this web application part to uh, and try to learn together how it uh, it operates and um, some of the basic functionalities in today's session. And then we go to more advanced uh, topics in the future training. When you go to the web, you will see two components. And that components, you, you will see a, a collision module. It's modular. Test cloud is modular. So one module deals with collisions. And we have a GIS map. So you can pick an area, a location on GIS and get all of the crash data and crash statistics for, for that. Or you can choose some crashes within the data grid that you will see and show them on the, on the GIS map. So there's a two-way communication between crashes and GIS. So whatever you uh, you basically you can choose on the GIS, see it in in a grid form in a Microsoft um, Excel type area, or choose it in in that grid. Show it on the map, and then um, you have also a variety of analytical tools like dashboards, um, ranking of locations, and also we have reporting capabilities. So you can run different types of reports uh, to see the details of crashes, to see uh, patterns and trends within um, an area or the entire country, uh, identify emphasis areas, areas with the largest groups of collisions, so that we can go and address those issues. Right now, what are we expecting from this today? Today, we are trying together to first log into the application. Then we go through um, the test cloud main, main page and see, look at different components. Greg will talk about that. We can um, learn how to see details of a collision. We can see how we can show collisions on, on the GIS map. 
we will get uh, become familiar with the concept of grid, and that's uh, an, a spreadsheet sheet type area in test that you can manipulate uh, data and uh, to to get what you're really looking for. For example, you can sort the data and filter the data. Why do we sort the fil filter the data? For example, if we have some questions like um, number of fatalities per year. So we can use the filtering of data to um, once you have all of the collisions, you can filter it to first identify fatalities and then um, filter for number of for 2020 to see number of fatalities in 2020 or how many pedestrian collision occurred in an area or in the entire in the Nairobi area. So we, we want to answer these types of questions. We can we can use uh, sorting, filtering, um, and also the pivot table capabilities that we have uh, in TAS. We can export the data. We can learn. Uh, we will learn how to export the data into uh, a spreadsheet, PDF, etc. We, we will learn how to run different types of reports to identify patterns and trends. So we want to know, for example, um, whether crashes are increasing or decreasing, how many fatalities, how many injuries we have per year, where um, the intersection with the highest number of crashes. These types of um, questions can be answered by looking at patterns and trends, and we have reports for that. And how to run different reports, how to see, how to identify high frequency locations. So these are some of the topics that we will be covered today. And then there will be more advanced topics that are coming um, in, in the next uh, trainings. So uh, in the advanced yes. training session, we will talk about, what's that? Is there any question? Um, so in the advanced training session, we'll talk about uh, uh, benefit cost analysis and some of the more advanced topics. Uh, in addition to the advanced training, we are producing short videos uh, for uh, Kenya, unique to or customized for Kenya on our test YouTube channel. So we will provide you with access to, to, to that. And we will, after the trainings are over, we will have bi-weekly drop-in sessions. So we, we allocate um, an office hour that you can uh, drop in uh, and ask your questions. We will also cover a case study. Um, so, uh, to, so that it's a, it's a refresher for, for everybody. So that would be voluntary um, an hour every two weeks. You can just uh, drop in. If you have any question, you just contact uh, support at test.ca. And uh, we, uh, you, you will get your answer fairly quickly. Um, so with that, I will pass it over to Greg Greg will walk you through how you can access um, the application and talk about the, some of the main fundamentals. So I, I okay, I, I suggest you go to your browser on your computer at this point and go to cloud.test.ca. Greg? Yes, uh, hello, Pedram. Hello everyone. Uh, as Pedram indicated, uh, advice, uh, please go to uh, web and log in with your uh, login and password into test into the clouds. Now I will be showing you some basic Greg. functionality. Yes. Great. Great. Can you open a browser and uh, type in where we go a step by step? Okay. Sure, you go to cloud.tes.ca. Cloud.test.ca. I would love to ask you if you can, if you can follow uh, my steps 
try to do whatever I do, try to do on your computer if you can. If I'm doing this too fast, please slow me down, uh, but please follow the, the steps. So let's go to the clouds, cloud.test.ca. If you go there, because I was before, so it goes automatically to, to the web, but in your case, you might be asked to log in. So you need to provide your login and a password. So please do so. As soon as you put your login and password, you should uh, be able to see the screen that I uh, have right now. If anyone has any issue, please uh, let us know. But that's what you should see. And uh, what you see is basically a uh, test in clouds. Yeah, it, this is beauty, Greg, beautiful Greg, Nairobi. Let's, let's uh, get some feedback, making sure everybody's in first. Yeah, so can you see this beautiful picture of Nairobi? Yeah, so just a minute uh, for everybody. You got your uh, login credentials. Your email, I think, is the login. And then you add a password. So if you can use that, we trust you got them uh, before you came in because you have all been set up in the system. So if you got in your email and then the password you got, if anyone has trouble, uh, we are all here to help. Thanks. Yes, so we should see uh, this a uh, picture of Nairobi, beautiful city of Nairobi, and uh, I'm uh, so excited to see Nairobi uh, early uh, in August uh, when I'm coming to provide training to the police officers uh, and hopefully meet, meet one of you. Uh, and then on the left side, we have this control panel when we have the login. So if you, if you logged in into test, you should see your login right there. When you can actually, if you click on the arrow, you can see your profile, you can log out. And then you will see dashboard, infrastructure, collisions, users, and documentation. If you are there, please click on collisions because we are talking Today we are uh, going to talk about the collisions. So click, please click on the collisions and you will see there are collisions, people involved and, and drafts. So click on the expand uh, the collisions and yeah. click on the collisions to see the grid. So, uh, so let, let's do it. So let's get some feedback, Greg. Uh, anybody who has not yet logged in. Anybody who has not yet logged in. Is anyone who doesn't see the grid, the table on their computer screen? So I'm waiting to hear if everybody see the table on their screens, then I can continue. So Tim, Aska, can you yes. give us feedback where we are? 
Is everyone logged in? Everyone can see everyone the table? Yes, everyone is now logged in. Thank you. And everyone can go to the collision and uh, please click on the collision to see uh, a table. Everyone should see a table now, by now. So we, after login, please go to the collisions, expand collisions and click on the collisions. So after login, you should see the screen like that. You expand collisions, click on the collisions and collision, and then go to collisions to see a table with all the collision records. Is anyone who doesn't have that? Well, everybody can see the table. Should we continue? Continue, please. OK, so uh, on the right side of the control panel, we see a, a table. This table contains many records. Those records are basically collision records that were entered into the system. So currently we have 196. This is just uh, sample data. Each record in the table represents collision record. Now this table has a uh, uh, those records, but also has different columns. Each column means something. So we have GUID. What the GUID is, is the location ID. This number comes from the GIS, from your from your map. So based on this GUID, location ID, we link collision records to the map, to the location uh, on the map. Next one is the location description. Location description basically provides you a description where the collision occurred. If collision occurred at the intersection, then we would have two intersecting street, just like you can see on the on the grid. Uh, we have street one at street two. If the collision occurred at the mid block, then you would say here street between street one and street two. Mid block, which is road section, this is part of the street between two intersections. So that therefore we have street name and then we have two limits for that uh, road section. And then we have uh, other columns. Now those columns, uh, you, each of you might see different columns. Those columns that you see on the grid can be modified can the, the table can be modified by each person what columns I see in my table. So if you click on that uh, column chooser, if you click on that icon, please, please do so. Please click on the column chooser. If you click on the column chooser, the small windows will pop up with all others columns that you can pull into the table or you can drop some of the columns from the table and uh, to that window. So for example, I have a county here and I would like to see the county on the grid. What do I do? I click on that county and hold my left mouse key and drag it into the into the table. I'm dragging and I'm putting right there. So you see now I have county on my table. If I don't want to have any columns, is this is the the same way? I'm whole, clicking on the county or any other column, and I'm dragging back to that window. So please try to uh, uh, to drop one of the columns into that windows. So again, click on that icon, please click on the icon column chooser on the right side. Click on that icon. 
and try to drop some of the columns or bring them back to the table. Now, this is done by user, which means that every person who is doing those things can have their own setup, their own view of the table. And this view of the table, it's being saved. So next time when you open tests, the view will be saved for you. So it means that every person can have different views. So please, please do so. Please grab one of those uh, columns, put them in this windows or, or take some of the columns and put them into the table. So again, we just click hold what we want to move to the table. Or we can put it back. Is anyone uh, having difficulties to do or uh, are we fine? I see a uh, note that some of the people, they have uh, the uh, column chooser is blank because if it's blank, it means that all the columns are on the grid. Okay. So, so if you, question, if it's yeah. blank, then. Quick question, yes. Brad. How do you revert it? Let's say you have uh, put everything in and you want now to get them back to default. Yeah. So if, if it's blank, it means that all the columns are on the grid. So let's let's do it. So if I put back all my all my columns here, right? If I take all of them, it will be blank, right? So that's why some of the people basically have all those information already on the grid. That's why it's blank. Um, Tim, in order to answer your question, how to revert it back to the original view. Um, you, uh, Greg, can you click on the setting on the on the top, of the bottom uh, left? No, no, here. Yes, there's a button, the second button on the top left. The, the view manager. Let me request. Uh, yes, exactly. And click on that one, and you can see that you have a default view, and you can reset to default view. So then you click on that one, and you automatically reset. Yes, please click on that one, and it will reset it to how it was supposed to be. You can use that one to reset or save your current column, the columns that you chose. Okay, so if you have your, if you have your blank, it means that all the columns are in your grid. I move some of them already to the column chooser, therefore it's not blank. So if you if you grab one of the columns and, and drag them, drag them here, it won't be blank anymore, right? So I hope everybody uh, has their uh, view the way you want it. And like I said, this view will be saved, uh, and next time you log in, you will see this the same view. Uh, just uh, a, a little, we'll let, let everybody get a handle of it a little bit. Uh, I don't think we've all got a handle of it, especially going back to where it was before. Yes, if that can be repeated and then we try it again, uh, the participants will get it better. Yes. Okay. Can I share so, my screen? Step, and Sure. 
Sure, go ahead. So, so let me describe how you can get back and get to here. Here. So on the top right, you can on the top left, you can see there is a one button on here. Can you see everyone? There is a button here. And if you click on that button, it will open for you a view. And this is essentially you can save and share your uh, current view. You click on this one, it opens. If you click on the default, it will automatically reset you to the default view that you should have. And usually that's the most common view that people have. And this is how we set it. A minute we are going around just to ensure that everybody has got that sure Amir, there's a question. Sure. When you go to default, you see two rows. Why are they two? And which what one do you, do you when you want to restore the the default settings. So someone, what do you mean by, so I can see it as each person will see different things based on what it's shared with them. Okay. So you see that here, uh, let's. So can you explain the concept here that uh, exactly. you can, That's, uh, yeah, please. Yes. So the concept here is that you can have different uh, views for different for users and even a user can have multiple views. Let's say that I want to, um, for example, see, uh, for example, I want to create a view that uh, remove these columns, for example. And let me just see and kind of let me scale and let me just, for example, I, I want to remove the address, for example, uh, let me choose the column chooser. I'll remove the address. And then I will remove the OB number, for example. Uh, let me drag it here and I will remove the OB number. And I'd like this view and I will change the order of the columns. I will remove, for example, the reporting officer to here. So now I'm happy with this view and you can see that this view is there and I'm happy with this view. And I want to save it for myself to do it in future. So for, and even for example, let's say that I will sort, sort it based on the accident number, I will have a sort. Then I will click here and I will press say that save current view. This is kind of report. I say that, for example, uh, Amir, um, for example, view, or for example, something like that, whatever you want to, and I will save it. And I will have it here, save here. You can see here that there are three menus. Three menus. It, so it shows that there is a name of that deep view, the status, who has this one. This is public, this is private, and this is shared with me. And if I want to switch to the default view that I had, so then I will have, and I will, you see that the columns will change. And if I click it again, and I want to go back to the AMI view, which has some fields removed and some fields added, and there was a sort, it automatically does that one and you can see that these columns have been in and there is a sort on accident number. Essentially, this is a kind of a saving a report and having it saved in your system.
this is an advanced topic. I didn't prefer to talk about it here, but I wanted to answer Dr. Timo Ketch's question. If you are, if you, if you, you don't need to work with it right now, but in future, we'll in the advanced topics, we will cover this more details. Okay, you can proceed. So I will stop sharing. I will give it back to uh, uh, Greg. So we have our views. Now we have our review. Uh, so we have different columns, the columns that we prefer to see on the on our grid. And each column represent some attributes of the collisions. Like I was saying, each collision is linked to infrastructure, to intersection or to or to mid block. How do you know? How do we know that it's intersect that collision occurred at the intersection or mid block? So here we have this GUID. This GOID is the indicator of the location. It has ID that is linked to your map. And intersections, intersection ID, it always starts with INT. So we have this INT uh, underscore and number, another INT underscore number. So if it's INT at the beginning, it means that it's intersection collision. It doesn't have if GUID doesn't have INT, then obviously is the road segment collision. So the collision is linked to road segment. It occurred at the road segment. So now if we are saying, OK, we would like to see collisions that occurred at the intersection. How do we uh, do it? So in test, we have those search tools. So this is the search tool. Each column has a search tool. So you can basically search on every column you, you want. So if we are looking at the uh, intersection collisions, we just click on the GUID. If we click on this uh, icon, you have different conditions, contains, does not contain, and so on. So in this case, we are looking for collision at the intersection. So we would say that GUID contains INT, right? So if I type INT, please proceed and uh, type INT here. If you click INT and hit enter, you will see all the collisions that occurred at the intersections. So please go to the column GOID and type INT. Greg, we have a comment that uh, uh, your, your the fonts on your screen is are not large enough. Are you able to? Um, maximize your browser or uh, mm. change your zoom. Yeah, I try to uh, make it. Uh, try to make my. Uh, display settings. Great. I suggest that if you change that one, it will change your screen resolution. It's, I'm not sure it's the best idea. I think try to zoom in in the browser, and I think it will make the fonts bigger. Um, so can you go ahead and uh, to the browser and on the top, oh, press yes, go and zoom in a little bit further. It will make it larger. And even on the top right side, yes, on the top right side, you can see that um, the, uh, make it larger a little bit. Uh, Great. On the top right side, you'll see a, the bottom, the maximize button. Yes, this will make it fuller screen, a little bit add more space to yours. And mm -hmm. maybe you like is it better now? Hello, is it better now? Let's carry on, Greg. OK, so I hope that everybody was able to type INT uh, within the GYD search, and we have all the collisions that occurred at the intersections. Now, this filter is right there on the bottom. 
So if we want to see all the collisions, we can just click clear on the right side on the bottom, and now we have all the collisions displayed. And on the bottom, we can see number of those collisions. So we have 196 collisions uh, within our table. What else we can do with the uh, with our table? So we can search by the GUID, with the inter talking about the intersections. Or let's say we would like to see uh, fatal collisions. So we can again go to another column, which is accident severity. If we click on the uh, search tool right here on the left, please click on that. Oh, I think I need to refresh my my test. Let me refresh it. Amir, I guess I need your help here. Sure. I refresh, but still it's not showing me. Sorry, I didn't get it. Sorry, just I was not. It's not showing me all the priorities. Uh, press control, please uh, press control F5. Ah. Um, just move on to another field and I, I will try to help you around. OK, great. OK. So let's say we have 196 uh, collision records. Now the question is, which location has the highest number of collisions? which location has the highest number of collisions. So how do we find those things? We take the uh, location description uh, name, the column name, we click left click on that column name and we drag it above the table. So now when we drag it, what's happening is the test will show us the collision, uh, the location and number of collisions. So in this case, we have nine collisions that were not assigned to any location, but the next one is the location with the six collisions. And when we expand, when we click on that arrow here, we can see all those collision records. So please do uh, the same thing what I did. So please grab the location description column and drag it to the area above the grid. So can you uh, explain, uh, Greg, why? We are not seeing what you're doing. Can you do it slowly so that uh, the participants okay. see what you're doing? Let's, let's go back. So the question is, which location has the uh, highest number of collisions? Right, Because we have 
196 uh, records, and the question is, okay, uh, which location has the highest number of collisions? So we can see which location is the possibly the most dangerous location. We want to find the total number of collisions for that location. So what we do, we click on the location description column name. So we, we are looking for the which intersection has the highest uh, number. Location. Which, yeah, which, which location, location which location has, has the, the highest, highest number, number of collisions? Okay, yes. so which, we can see location. what Greg is doing. So the question is, which location has the highest number of collisions? So we move mouse above the location description. We click left key on the mouse and hold it. We hold this. So by holding this mouse, we can drag now, we can drag this column name to the area above the column, uh, above the table. Okay, so we are grabbing and putting in this area above the table and release. So we are dragging, release and click on the uh, mouse key again and then test, summarize all the collision records, counts how many collision occurred at each location. So folks, this is a very powerful tool that uh, Tess has. Whenever you want to summarize based on one of the columns, you can use this uh, group by box. So this was one application. The other application is uh, when you want to know how many collisions you have per year. Then we, we will take uh, accident year, move it up and group it by that. We can do this right. Once you are comfortable with location, we can try the same exercise with uh, year. Hi, Tom. Yep. Hi, Tom. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, so uh, just, uh, Greg, uh, can you refresh your page? Press control, control refresh, but that's fine. And then uh, can you try the accident severity? No, that's fine, just okay. Can you press control and refresh, please? Control, hold the control and press the refresh button on the top left. That's good. Uh, so, and that's all. Um, so, that's it. Please continue. So, we can drag, like we're saying, drag location, then we know the location with the highest number. So, we have location right there with six collisions, five, five, and so on. You can use any other column. So, let's say initial impact type or severity. You can grab it, put it here. So we know that a pedestrian collision is the highest number of collisions in, in this case. Or we can take it and say accident severity. So we have number uh, of collisions uh, with uh, severity. Also, we can do multiple grouping. So we can take a accident year. Greg, and, Greg, uh, Greg. Yes. Sorry, let's let's get some feedback, see how people are doing. So if everyone was able to find out what is the highest location with the location of the highest number of collisions. Uh, give us a little more time. Sure. So again, you just grab the uh, column name to the area above the grid above the table.
الان سلام یه سال چرا اینجوری میشه بعض وقت درسته بعض وقت درست نیست و دیگه دیگه من جور تو پریزنتیشن دو تا هم کار میکنه نمیشه دیگه بهش گفتم کنترات فرنش بگیر بعد خودم هم همینجوری شدم امیر 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 you're on mute you're mute yourself So let's drag the location description into the uh, area above the grid. So now we are grouping collision records and we are counting number of records for each location. Also, you can pull other columns into that area. So let's say I would like to see accident severity at, the, at those locations. So again, click left and drag this column into that area as well beside the location description. Now we have two groupings. So we can see the number of collisions for that location and below we can see also the severity of those collisions. So try that uh, as well. Yes, yeah, so we drag location description into the area above the table. And then next we drag accident severity into the gray, into the area above the table. So now we have two groupings, one by location and also by severity. How are we doing there? Aska, can you walk around the room and see how people are doing? Let us know. Of course, you can use any other columns. Uh, I was just using location description, accident severity, but uh, any other column can be used. So we can take, uh, let's say, accident severity. I can take initial impact type. Uh, Greg, you can proceed. Okay, great, thank you. So that's the, uh, as Pedram was indicating, this is very powerful. You, as you can see, you can very quickly uh, get information uh, about location, about severity or impact type. It's very uh, powerful tool and that's what you can use. Like I said, you can use any columns. 
uh, to use for, for the grouping. Uh, you can start with accident severity, for example, and then right away you know, okay, within my uh, city, Nairobi, we had uh, serious injuries, 121, federal collisions, 57, and so on. So that's very quickly, uh, this will, will give you quick statistics uh, what's going on uh, within your city. Uh, another one, uh, let's say, uh, uh, yes, I would like to have the severity. Each column can be filtered, can be filtered. So if I go to accident severity uh, and then have the property damage only collisions, I click on that and now I have only property damage collisions. And then so we have the uh, number of uh, six property damage. And now we might say, OK, we would like to see those collisions on the map. So we can click on that icon, show on, show map. If I click on show on map, so try to do the same thing, select a the collision that there. Want, Greg, yeah. Greg uh, select the collisions if you want to show it too. Yeah. So now we click on the to be able to show them on the map. So we are selecting here by clicking on that box, we're selecting all the collision records here. And then we click show map. If we click show on the map, You can see those green dots on the map. This is where the collision occurred. Now with wheel, uh, mouse wheel, you can scroll to zoom in or zoom out, or you can use those icons here, zoom in, zoom out, or use the scroll mouse. So please proceed. So I hope that everybody has a map uh, at the screens. So we can see on the map where those collisions occurred that we filtered. Now with mouse or with those icons, we can zoom in or zoom out the area. Now, if we click on those one on one of those uh, dots, green dots, left click. If we click, it means that we are selecting this dot. We are selecting this collision record. And if we want to see any details about that collision, it's a matter to click and click on the show, show collision detail. Greg, let's, uh, let's get some feedback from the room. Mm -hmm. Aska, can you, can you let us know uh, if anyone has a map on the screen and they are able to see those collisions. Is anyone was able to to get to that point? Can you please confirm? 
Give us a few more minutes. Sure. Greg, we can see your screen. It's still not. Greg, you can proceed. Okay, so let's let's say um, uh, I would like to see all the uh, collision uh, records at the intersections. So I go like before, go to the GUID, 
click INT and I'm getting all the records at the collision, uh, all the uh, uh, collision records at the intersections. So now, <clears throat> now I would like to see them on the map. So I'm selecting here, by clicking the accident number, I'm selecting all the collision records here. And now I click on a show on the map. So I hope that you were able to see collisions on the map as well. Now I see those dots all around the city where the collision occurred. Now when you zoom in by, uh, by the uh, wheel on the mouse, you can zoom in or zoom out. So I'm zooming in to one of the area I'm interested in. Or you can click on those icon plus and minus. Now if I click left key on the mouse, if I click on that uh, dot, one of those green dots, I can say I would like to see all the details about that collision. So I click show. When I click show, now test opens that collision record shows this location on the map right there, zoom into that location, and then I can see information about that collision record. So we have general information, we have roads information on that tab, we have vehicle information, driver information, passenger information, uh, pedestrian information, uh, uh, people involved, attachment, remarks, all those information are available here. So please, please uh, try to to do it. So if we are on the if we are on the uh, map, we, if we filter our collisions, click on the box to select all those records. Click on the map. Show map. Then we zoom in to the location that we are interested in. We click on the green dot and we click on show to see the details about that collision. So oh, please ask, uh, look if uh, anyone was able to see the details of the collisions from the map. What, what collisions were you plotting? The, those are the details of the collisions that uh, uh, that occurred uh, from the any, from the map. Any so let's go again. We are. We are looking at the collision that occurred at the intersections, right? So we filtered collisions record. So you can filter any uh, about anything. You just filter the uh, grid for the collision that you, that you are interested in. So I filtered the intersection collisions. Yeah, so with the GUID, if you type INT, you will see only intersection collisions. Okay, so under GUID, you type INT, INT, and you see all the intersection collisions. Now, if you want to see them on the map, first you select all the collisions by clicking on this box. If you click on that box, all the collisions will be selected, which occurred at the intersections because the filter was intersection collisions. 
and then we show them on the map, right? So we would like to see where collisions occurred at which intersections the collision occurred. So now we have those dots. One dot, the green dot, represents collision records at the intersection. Now, if we zoom in to the area that we are interested, we can click on that dot to get more detailed information about that collision. You can proceed. Okay. All right. So that's that's all from that's all from me at that moment. So maybe let's have a a, a break and then. Uh, Amir will continue the more sophisticated analysis. Okay, uh, Aska team, let's have a break now. And then uh, uh, Amir will continue with the uh, more sophisticated analysis. Okay, we have a 10 minute break. We resume at uh, in 10 minutes time. Sounds good. Thank you.
So now it gives you the type of vehicle to the visit the number by But now the total number of fatalities.
Um, I think let's start the meeting and uh, continue the meeting because we may run out of the time. So we won't, we don't want to rush at the end. Uh, Dr. Timo Kech, Aska, um, are you there? Hello, team Aska. Should we continue? Can you ask, uh, please, people to go back to their computers? Okay, kindly pick your tea and take it to your desk so that we can continue. Great. Yeah, we are a little bit behind the schedule, so will be good to, to start uh, very soon. Thank you.
Okay, we, uh, we can continue now. Great. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Amir Zainbal, and today I'm going to um, help you to uh, go ahead with your test application and um inst and try to do some advanced analysis on your data on collision data so everyone can hear me yes you can hear you awesome so let me share my screen and let's just start uh, to move forward so before i start to dive in i will start a presentation i will try to show you some of uh some concepts that you may be already familiar with and I'm just um, um, talking about it. So first of all, I want to talk to you about the collision module. And in the collision module of tests, as you can see, there, if you open any collision record, as was Greg was describing, or you may already have opened one of your collisions, you will see that there are some fields that are obvious, like date, accident date and time, accident number, uh, but there are more into that one. And there are some new fields that has been added to P40Y, P41, uh, because they, we need some additional information for safety analysis, analysis of what was causing fatal or injury collisions. And here, I'm having the, the list of the properties that you might be interested as a safety engineers and you, and, and you want to investi investigate the collisions based on this information. So as you can see, the first important beside the location, you already know the location and the location, each location has a, a geo ID and you can see it in the geo ID and location. But the other important part is that um, if the, the police fills it up and uh, or you can see it based on your GIS data that all the locations you, you all can understand if, if it was an intersection related collision or non intersection related. And that's really important so that if you're doing some investigation on your network, you know that if there are some problems in in the areas in your network and the and the problem is is. In, in your intersections or, or in road segments. And the treatments of diff are different. For example, if you have, for example, you, see, you can see that in an intersection, you have lots of collisions, then and you go and investigate and see that there are lots of collisions, the cars that they have angle collision, essentially one will cross one uh, going northbound and the other one going to, for example, westbound and they will hit each other. So then you may need to install a traffic signal or you may be need to adjust a traffic signal or you may need to red, you install a red light camera. It's different than when you have a collision at the in middle of the mid block because, for example, the speed limit is not right or maybe the visibility is poor or maybe um, the friction of the surface is not right. So this is a different uh, treatment that you need to do. And uh, I think you need to, first of all, you need to understand that it's really important to distinguish between the location based on the um, intersection or non-intersection related property. The second important property is the severity. And I believe as a, as a, transport, as a transportation engineer and as a safety engineer, most of you are uh, familiar with that one. So usually the, uh, there are three categories of collisions. There are either injury, injury collisions, uh, fatal collisions, and there is PDO or property damage only. In the fatal collisions means that there was at least one fatality in the 30 days after the collision in that uh, related to any people involved in that one. And in injury collision means that there was at least one person in that collision um, that has um, an injury. And PDO, property damage only, means that there was uh, damages to properties, which means the vehicles or infrastructure. And it's really important so, uh, to understand the concept and how to apply it. And later on, we will go and do some hands-on experience on that. The other important topic here that is initial impact type, which means that how cars were, uh, what was the maneuvers, what was the direction of the travels on the cars before the accident, 
and then the first, what was the first impact that they have. And then I'm going to talk about that one a little bit later, but essentially we'll try to say that if it was a rear end collision or it was an angle collision. And then based on that one, you can uh, apply different uh, uh, methods and to fix the data because we are trying to go to um, in many countries like Canada, US, many European countries and in, in around the world in Africa and in uh, Asia, there are lots of countries that are moving toward something which is called Vision Zero, which they try to zero the number of fatalities and injuries in their collisions. And it has lots of aspects. The other important is the driver maneuver. So what was the driver doing before uh, um, before um, before the accident? Uh, what was the maneuver of the driver? And what was the driver condition? Were, were they distracted? Were they drunk? Or they were under, uh, for example, um, influence of, uh, for example, they were unattended, they were checking their phone, or they might be doing some uh, other stuff, or they were driving normally. So this will have a lot of effects. So, for example, if you see that the driver maneuver, for example, the driver condition, for example, before was drunk, and you have lots of drunk drivers or dr drivers under, under, um, for example, under influence of the drugs, then you might need to have better enforcement in your network. You may need to have um, some, um, for example, uh, training sessions for drivers, or you may need to have some uh, penalty point system that try to prevent, uh, for example, collisions. Uh, and for example, in Canada, uh, for the young drivers, um, there was lots of uh, young drivers that they were under the influence of drugs or uh, uh, alcohol. And the solution that they introduced was they added some policy system so that it, they called the zero tolerance. So if they uh, if they if a police um, um, caught a young driver with um, um, alcohol in their blood, um, their cars may be impounded immediately and their driver's license will be suspended and there will be lots of demerit points associated with them. So that's why it was implemented. The other one is the same for pedestrian. Are the pedestrians are attentive to the roads or they were, they were checking their phones? And what was the pedestrian action? They were crossing at the crosswalks or they were just crossing at the middle of the streets. And if that's the case, we, we need to maybe have crosswalks, maybe we need to have, for example, uh, pa uh, pedestrian passageways and all those kind of things. And another part is the vehicle type. What was the vehicle type? For example, if there are lots of buses in the collisions or there are truck drivers that are in the trucks, then you need to in you need to investigate that one and understand if you need to have, for example, a speed limiters on trucks. You may need to have GPS trackers on the trucks, or you may need to have additional trainings for truck drivers or tr uh, track their uh, uh, driving hours, for example, so that if they are fatigues, uh, they, are, they are really fat, they, they are fatigued, they are not driving, and you need to make sure that's happening. On the topic of the initial impact, of, it is something new for you, and we're going to describe this one for you, and then for the police officers and the other safety people as well, it's really important to understand the initial impact of, and this is one of the key information in the collisions. And the first one is, we call it, the, the initial impact type is, describes the general path of vehicles immediately before the first impact. And if there are more than one uh, impact location, the impact happened on that collision, the first is important. The first one that I will talk about is the approaching which means that the initial travel of the um, each vehicle is opposite to each other and at least one vehicle impacted on, in the front. And this is also called head-on collision. Essentially, for, let's say that one vehicle is going from uh, north to the south, which is we call it the southbound direction, and one vehicle was going from uh, north to the, uh, sorry, south to the north, the northbound one, and then they hit each other um, in the front, and that's called the initial, the, um, approaching or head-on collisions. And as you can see here in many collisions and many literature, you will see that they will represent by a shape in the diagram. So you can see that the cars are represented by an arrow. An arrow shows what's the direction of the travel. So you can see this car is moving from north to the south. So this is southbound direction here, this car. And then there was another car involved in this collision 
and it was moving from uh, south to north, and that's here. And they collided in the front. You see that this circle shows where they collided. And you can see that this one, this is because both of them, they, uh, they were going in the opposite direction. It's called um, approaching. Similar to that one, there is an angle collision. An angle collision is that when one vehicle was going from, let's say that, for example, eastbound, and it was going to the east, for example, and there was one vehicle going northbound, and they hit each other uh, and, and the 90 degree. Um, so this is called angle collision. And um, as you can see on the diagram, one car was going, for example, straight, uh, on the, going up going west, uh, westbound, and there's one car going northbound, and then they hit each other. And this, and this is really important to understand because, for example, let's say that this is happening, and we will go and see that, that inter there is one intersection that there are lots of angle collisions happening. The meaning will be that there are, the, you need to apply some, uh, maybe if there's no traffic signal there, you need to install traffic signal there. Um, or if it doesn't have, uh, for example, stop signs, you need to install a stop signs. And if this this is still happening with those ones, you may need to install red light cameras, or maybe you need to check the friction of the surface, or you need to check the traffic signal timing. Maybe the amber time is not enough. Maybe um, the, uh, the viewing angles are not right. So that's why it's really important. The other one is turning movement. Turning movement means that one way the those vehicles were uh, were uh, traveling in parallel directions. For example, one was going uh, northbound and one was going uh, southbound, and then uh, one of them wanted to do, for example, a right turn, and they hit each other and they call the collision. And you can see that there is a difference between angle and turning movement. In the angle, they were first they were traveling. Uh, in perpendicular to each other, but in the turning movement, they were initially uh, traveling the same direction. So when that happened, uh, it means that, for example, one car was trying to do a right turn and the other one was hitting the other car. It means that, um, for example, maybe you need to have a protected left turn, uh, right turns or left turn uh, lanes, and you can have a protected um, uh, uh, signal timing in your um, uh, signal timing. And then you are going to have uh, the other types, which is the side swipe. Essentially, the cars will hit each other on the side. The rear end is that the cars will hit each other on the back of each other. Um, and then you have the single mo mo motor vehicle, which essentially the car will hit one static object. You can see that here, one vehicle is moving. There is one static object there, and they hit it, hit it at this point. And then we have the single monitor vehicle other, which one vehicle uh, hit, for example, with a fixed object like a pedestrian or animal. And the other concept that today I'm going to talk about is emphasis areas, which is really important because you're traffic safety uh, engineers and you want to try to reduce the number of the fatality and injuries. And usually we call it the emphasis areas, and it's, it's just a concept in road safety planning. And usually we try to group collisions by certain characteristics, like, like what I talk about, the intersections. Or, for example, aggressive drivers. You can see that in the driver uh, maneuver and the driver action, we have the information, the posts are going to record the information about uh, what was the drivers doing. Was, were they going too fast? Were they trying to go, uh, for example, uh, they were um, not having proper distance with a front car or the speed that they chose was too fast for the condition. Let's say there was a storm and they were trying to go, they were going under in speed limit, but because of this storm, they should have gone slower. So then when you have lots of aggressive drivings, then you will decide and you will suggest to your managers or to the city that, hey, you have lots of aggressive drivers. You need to go and put some, for example, pamphlets. You need to uh, teach people. You maybe you need to have more enforcement, like speeding cameras. Maybe you need to have um, speed cameras or maybe have red light cameras. Or for example, if you have lots of pedestrian collisions, you need to talk to your pedestrians. Maybe you need to install, as I said, more crosswalks or you need to have overpass, for example. Or if you have lots of young drivers, you may need to do, as I said, training, for example, training session or demerit point, or you may maybe need to go to the universities and teach them. Or you, in Canada, for example, I saw that lots of young drivers are in collisions. What they did is that they 
created a graduating system in driving. So you will get uh, first level and then you can drive with someone with four years of experience and more. And then after a year, you can go and do your full, for example, driving license and do it. And if it's trucks, I talked about it. And then based on these groups, you know that how you can allocate your precious resources because you as a uh, as a traffic engineer, you know that your city has limited resources. And based on the limited resources, you need to prioritize and these emphasis areas will help you. And I will teach you how you can use tests to monitor these emphasis areas and see what are effects of your policies. And if you want to reach to the vision zero and you try to minimize the number of fatalities and collisions in your, in, and, and injuries in your network, what you can do. So um, test is going to help you in this stuff and it will help you in this manner. So um, now I will start to dive in and uh, show you some uh, how you can do this in, form, in this data. So any questions or comments by this? Part of the presentation. Yeah, I'll just say something small again on this emphasis area. Uh, for us here in Nairobi or in Kenya, what do you think is our emphasis areas? Do you think it agrees exactly with what we have there on the board? Someone has something to say? Well, um, yes, I think the area of emphasis, as you talked about in terms of um, uh, large attacks on those areas, location, action, vehicles, and, and, and I think you've indicated some. So following uh, the discussions from uh, the presenter, I'm okay with it. Uh, but as always, in case anything arises there, then we can incorporate. Thank you. Sure. sure. I, I totally agree with Dr. Kibogong. Uh, in the first one, of course, we have pedestrians. Pedestrians are always the most vulnerable and the ones who die most on our roads. Uh, trucks then also go up. And uh, maybe, maybe we might also want to, of course, motorcycles, now we have motorcycles. They are going yes. to start showing up uh, more and more when the data is coming. A lot of data is not being collected uh, for motorcycles, maybe because of the places where they are occurring and, and so on. But once we deploy the tablets, you are going to see lots of motorcycle accidents uh, on, on some of those emphasis areas. And uh, uh, matatus are definitely also an issue. Although with matatus, we are talking more of the, the numbers, the victims. Yes, the numbers itself might not be so high, but the impacts in terms of victims, like if one bus kills 30 people, then uh, you have lots of uh, uh, casualties. So uh, we will look at that and we will see how we can also eventually customize uh, this to ensure that it captures what our emphasis areas are in that regard. Thanks, carry on, Amir. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so uh, just I wanted to show you just a glance of what you have. Yes, as Dr. Uh, Timokesh mentioned, for example, motorcycles, old drivers, distracted driving. These are really important topics that many places around the world use these ones. And this list, this is, this could not be limited to this list. This is our proposal for now. And then if you go and do some research and you came up with a list, we can add it to this list as well. Just this is a kind of interactive tool. And um, we want you, all of you as a traffic and transportation engineers and safety engineers, uh, we want to keep thinking and try to come up with ideas and to try to help uh, your people and your country to uh, move forward and move to, uh, to the time period that you won't have any um, um, injuries or at least serious injuries or fatal injuries in your network. That's a, that's our goal, and this is what we are trying to hope for. So great. So let's have a hands-on experience. So everyone, do you have your laptops ready? Are they open and ready and powered up? Um, please go ahead and go to the collision page. And I want all of you 
Uh, so please open your collision page and please press the refresh button. So I want to make sure that you have all the data loaded and refreshed. So please press the refresh button. Did everyone did the refresh button? And then I want all of you to click on this report viewer and click on the test default. So I want all of you to see the same thing that I'm seeing here. Same columns, same information. I want all of you to see this and have the experience so that because I have a couple of practices that we need to do together and extract some values and numbers. Um, so that's why I want all of you to um, have the same view. So please make sure that you do that one. So uh, please, everyone, did you refresh your browser and went to the test default view? If you have any questions or comments, please ask uh, um, um, people in the room so that they will help you. Well, not uh, seeing the refresh button. Where is the refresh? Can you move your cursor to it? Here, this is the button under your browser. You can you have the back button, forward, and refresh button. I want you to ref reload this button. You see, you can press Control R or F5 on your laptops usually to do that one. Yes. It's not showing. It's not showing. Here, it's on top beside the address bar. Or oh, right, uh, yeah. Do you see this one here? This is a refresh button here in your browsers. I want to refresh and reload your data. Pardon, I cannot hear. Um, sorry, just if you can take the microphone if you're talking. So everyone is ready. And did you press on the view and kind of load the test default? I want all of you to have the same view so that we can solve the exercises together. Should I just proceed, Dr. Timokech? Good, I think we are good to go. Awesome. So great. So as Greg mentioned, and I think taught you the basics of doing this one. Um, so you can see that now you need to, you can see that the columns are like this. So you have different fields and different information. You can see that the accident number, Joe ID, location description, accident date and time, severity, and initial impact type, and the others. So I'm going to click on one of these collisions, and I will try to go and see um, the information here. One, once I click on here, you can see that the, the detail of that collision is loaded. So first, you have the division. So each each town in your uh, cities is in your cities are divided. Are everybody click on a click 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 on a collision and let okay. it open. Let so it open. Go with the uh, uh, mirror at the same time. Yes, let's do it that way. Yes, let's click and open one of the collisions. All right. Uh, if best, we should all open one. Which one should we open? Which one did you click? So 
So that is um, doesn't matter. You can open, but I open the one that the action number ends with um, the, for example, here, this one, the second one that ends with 4604. But doesn't matter. You can open any of them. Yeah. This is a general information. information not... Yes. Yes. So I'll click on that one, and you can see that it's showing that first. What's the division? And you can see it say that Nairobi um, Kasarani. Yeah. It has the accident registration number. This accident registration number is the number that police generates. But essentially, as you can see, it includes the unique number for that accident. And if you want to talk about it with someone and for example, refer to an accident, you can mention this number and this number is unique. And essentially it is, you know, start with the date that this happened and some other numbers related to that one. It shows that which county is doing this one. It, you can have the county there. And then they have different information like uh, occurrence book number, um, and name of the reporting officer, accident date and time, all of them here and the exact location of the accident based on the police de description. And if you look at on the right side, the, the, uh, the location is there. So the location essentially is saying that this one happened at an intersection. This is the name of the intersection. And here it shows the map and where that accident happened. And you can see that there is a pin there and it shows where that accident happened, for example. And this information comes uh, once the police deployed their, um, their tablets it will come from the GPS information of the tablet. But in the meanwhile, they will put the address number if they use the uh, printed forms, and then someone will put it in the system and choose this location for you. And you can see that you can expand this GPS location. You can click on this button, and it shows the longitude and latitude, and even from your GIS map, uh, what's the coordinate, X coordinate and Y coordinate of your uh, GIS system. And if you go down, let me unlock my, um, let me unlock my uh, record. And you can see that it shows the initial impact that, that I talked to you. So if I click here, you are not able to open it because this record is locked and only police or admin users are able to do that one. But I just wanted to show you the list. A pedestrian, angle, collision, rear end, side swipe, turning movement, and all of them one that I talked about are mentioned here. Then the, another piece, important piece of information is there, the accident severity. It shows that if this one it was a fatal, serious uh, injury, a slight injury, property damage only, and other. And then we have the total number of participants, total number of victims, and the police cause number. You can see that police has a, a sophisticated system of the cause number. And for example, say that what this happened, for example, the car suddenly stopped or for someone misjudged the clearance. And this one will help you a lot in understanding uh, your, uh, what, what happened there. You have the accident site type. So the police will report, is, was it is a junction or not junction? And if it was a junction, what kind of junction was that? And this will help you to do the analysis. Any questions? Sorry, I hear the voice. Is there any connection? Your screen is frozen. You're not moving. Um, Greg, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I can. And can you see that I click on the junction type? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see that. Um, Aska, I think it's from your internet. We need to wait a little bit your internet catch up, I think. So can you see that my mouse is on ju junction type? Can you see that one? No. So it is not, it is not there. Can you see, can you see that one? Yes, you can now see your cursor. Good. So then you can see that there is traffic signal and signs there. What kind of traffic signal was installed there? For example, if you see, for example, there was no traffic signal at one intersection and there are lots of collisions in that intersection. We need to think about it and maybe we need to install a stop signs. Arden, were you talking? Uh, uh, my, okay. Some of our computers here are not having the same permissions uh, as the other guys. Yes. That's the one on no, no. 
No, just I'm showing to you. You, you won't have the permission to edit them because um, you are the only police are able to edit these details. And because I have a super admin account that I want to show it to you in demo, that's why we have it. But otherwise, you should not be able to open these values and see the values inside them. That's that's the reason. The records are locked by police. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, can you hear me? Um, and Dr. Timo Cash can provide, they did this study on these ones. He, um, Dr. Timo Cash and Asko can provide you later with a list of the, all the fields and all the values and the meaning of those values. I think all, Dr. Timo Cash, they already have this document and later on they can distribute this one to you. Not right now in this meeting, but later on they can distribute this document with you, share this document with you. Actually, yes, yes. The, the the last part of the of the document that you have has all the definitions. Awesome, that's great. So we can check that those ones and the meanings of the fields and the definitions they have it. And then you can see here that you have uh, traffic. If there was a traffic signal, and if there was a traffic signal, what was the traffic signal condition? And if there was a railway crossing there and was the road work at the accident time and what was the weather condition it was cloud clear cloudy foggy rainy and other and what was the illumination and this is one of the most important part which for example if there was lots of accident happening and there was no street light there it means that maybe you need to install a street light now i'm scrolling up back there and you can see that this was the general information and this was the general information about that collision. For example, if that there was, what was the accident location? What was the lighting at that accident location? What was the weather there? But in one accident like this one, there could be multiple roads involved. And the people will see that, for example, the police will fill this information, say that one of the roads that this was at this intersection is general, uh, for example, uh, Warogi Road. And say that the pavement was paved and the pavement damage, pavement condition was pavement, damaged edges, for example. And they can have multiple roads involved here. The other tab, which is here, is vehicle. And you can see that it will have the information about vehicle, but in the police officer here didn't feel that much information about the, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the vehicle. And this is natural. In these records, you will see lots of missing information because there was no system in place. And Dr. Timo Kedge, uh input a sample of the data there. And this sample usually lacks some information. And for example, the people's information, the vehicle information. But for, uh, in future, when we went to the full deployment and the uh, pilots in Nairobi, then we will have the information ready and police officers are being trained to in, in, interrogate this information. And this is one of the important piece of uh, information. It's really important in the future so that we make sure that police officers fill this information properly. And then you can see that this one here said that there was a driver. So the driver information is there. Say that, oh, there was one driver um, and the age was 80. There was an old driver. It was a male driver and it was exceeding the speed limit. You can see there was action. I, I talk about that action. And you can see that there, there are the driver condition, um, um, uh, driver conditions to do that one. Um, a next tab that is, is passengers. If in that vehicle there were more passengers, the, the police will enter the passenger information here. And if I move to the pedestrian, you can see that there was a pedestrian involved here. And that driver, there was a male 80 years old driver, uh, went and he he was going too fast and he, he hit a male uh, person, 37 years old. And uh, that person, the pedestrian, died in this collision. You can see this information here. And then if I go to the people tab, you can see that 
only people that were involved, the summary of them will be happen here. So, and it shows the common information between all those people. You can see that there was one driver in, involved there, and there was a kind of the, uh, the pedestrian and all the information there. Now I can go ahead and uh, do uh, go to the next section. You can see that there are more tabs into this one because my screen is limited and there are more information there. You can see there's attachment. So if the police goes to the scene of the crash and take pictures of the crash, uh, then you will see the attachments here. If if you don't see, you can see, click, you can see that there's an arrow button here that if I click, it will show the information there. So here you can see that you can scroll there. It shows the remarks. Remarks are usually for police officers. They will see that who was responsible, what's the summary of the accident, and all the information, who was, when the police was dispatched, all this information was recorded there. Then we have the change log, which logs any changes. So if any police officers, after creating the records, goes and change, or anyone else goes and change any piece of information in that record, it will capture it and here. And this is really important for the uh, later on. And there's one other important tab which is validation, which means that because there are some validation rules. And for example, the severity of the collision is required. So if the police enters information and the information is missing or contradicting, there will be messages here saying that this is not right and say it will give you an error there. So essentially now we reviewed a collision. So please go ahead and play with your collision and see how open one collision and take a look and see what's going on. So everyone, are you able to just go ahead, scroll, navigate? You can open another uh, uh, another collision. I will go back. I will press this back button, and then I will go, for example, open another one. And I can see the information, and you can browse, and you can see all, any of these collisions yourself. You can go to the pedestrians and see what's happening. People. And I can go back, for example. You can see th that one that I opened, there was two drivers. It was evil. So, Dr. Timo Cash, please let me know when everyone had the chance to review collisions and you're ready to move to the next piece. Should I proceed, Dr. Timo Kiyach? Sorry, I didn't hear you if you were talking. Yes, we can proceed. Sure. Okay. And another important part here in the top menu, you can see it, you, you will see this in this icon many places in your application. And you can see that there's a report button there. And if you click on that one, in, this is one collision. So if I open one collision, if I click on report, I will click on report and as, as Excel and it will export that information for that collision to an Excel for me. 
And let me just sh sh show it to you. So that if you want to edit this one, share this information with someone else, all the information that are available, you will be able to see it there. The other part that is in, in, in the, another report, which is interesting maybe for you, is the report viewer. If you click on that one, it will provide the form, the crash the, uh, report form. And this is essentially a form that um, you can share with someone. You can uh, print it, you can print it, or you can save it and export it to PDF, Excel, um, Word, uh, CSV image, and then you can put it in, uh, you can share it with someone. So essentially I will click and say that, hey, please give me a PDF of this uh, collision. And it will give me the PDF of this one. And you can see that I can share it or print it as I wish, for example. So please go ahead and try to do the uh, create, download the PDF for your report as well. Please open one collision and try to have the PDF ready. Should I move forward when everyone is ready? Please let me know. Yes, you can proceed. We are good. Awesome. That's great. So now let's go back uh, to the uh, press back and come to the grid view and let's talk about the grid view. Okay, so Greg talked talk to you about how you can do filtration in uh, doing the information, but let's go ahead and try to take a look and try to see, uh, for example, we want to see what we will do in practice to summarize the data. I believe that all of you have this uh, training material there. And we want to 
solve these questions together. So you can see that this is kind of the training material that have been provided to you. And you can see that uh, we have this um, we have this uh, page ready for you. So that's talking about the questions. Do you have your questions ready? Do you have your questions ready? Can you open your questions and questions ready? So let's go ahead. If everyone has their questions ready, please, Dr. Chimokesh, please let me know once I ask everyone to do something. I will, I will wait for you. Um, uh, that one. Andrew, send a message. I will drag and drop the uh, for the people who are online and they don't have uh, that file. I will, I will, I will send you a link to the file so that you can see and you can have the files ready. So that's just let me just. I will do that one. Let me. Send you a link. So in the chat for the people who are online, I'm going to send this document in, in the chat. So you are able to do to download this one or view it online and just do this one. But I will share it on my screen. But this question. So question number one. Let's everyone has the questions. Yes, everybody has the questions now. Awesome. So it says that what are, so this is typical scenarios that you may deal with and you want to extract some information. The reason that we're trying to solve these questions is that many of your managers will ask you about the total number of collisions that happen in intersections in years. And you want to compare, you may want to create an Excel chart and you want to see uh, what's happening in your network over the years. Are you, if the number of collisions are reducing or increasing? So you may need to extract this information for yourself and you want to analyze this in a part of the network or everywhere and try to see what's happening. So then let's do try one example. Say that what are the total number of collisions for intersections in the following years. So essentially, I need to go and open my collisions. So I have my collisions open. And the question was asking, what are the look uh, collisions as intersections? So as Greg described you in the last section of the road, we was describing to you that how you can do that one. You can click here and I will search and say that contains int. I will do that one and I will select all of the intersection related collisions and you can see that all the intersection collisions are selected and you can see that I have 36 collisions at the intersections. You can see on the bottom of this row I have this um, count 36. Please go ahead and do this one. Can you apply this in uh, this uh, uh, this um, filter. Can you see the filters and can you apply the filter? Can you select all the intersection related ones? come up again just go from the start of that so how to find uh, okay so where do we go do we go to do we go to G uh, for, yes you need to go to the column GID uh -huh. the second column 
and you need to click here. You can see that underneath there is a kind of a search. There's a search uh, one here, right? Uh -huh. I will press contains. At search, would we put INT? Yes, INT. All of your intersections start with INT. Okay. Then, Good. Good. then you should have 36 collisions selected here. You can see that if you scroll down, it shows you the count is 36. Do you have all those 36 collisions? As you can see, go ahead, please. Can you see, can you generate those ones? Please let me know when you're ready. Everyone is ready? Should I press it?
shall we proceed, Dr. Timokic? We are uh, um, we are really short on media and we have lots of materials to cover. Thank you. 
And Dr. Uh, Timo Kech, please let me know when I should continue. Uh, most people are still at number 4343. Three. So let us know how you want us to proceed, Dr. Amir. That's great. So just, I didn't understand. What do you mean by number two or three? Sorry, just what's happening? Can you tell me? Dr. Timo Kiech, can you can you explain? Sorry, um, can you tell me what's Dr. Timo Ketch. Um, And so events, uh, I saw your message there. Um, uh, are you in the room or you are just online? Hello? Hello. 
I can hear you, Dr. Okech. Can you tell me? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, they're still working you, on it. Can, can you update me what's happening and uh, what's going on here? Uh, I think it's valid. Uh, no, sorry, just they were supposed to solve question number one. Are they moving to other questions? I, I think number one, the people have passed it. They have got it. I think it's straightforward. Yeah, but number three and four, I need to talk about it. So please stop there. If you already reached the question, you solved question two and three, then one or uh, one or two, please um, stop. The number and three number and four, four God, needs explanation. All right. So guys, a moment. Number four. Uh, the one of uh, counting the number of injured people, Dr. Yes. Mia wants to talk about that. Yes. Discuss about so, that. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. Uh, so let me, yes, let me, let me describe here. Just let me do it. So each collision, you can see the, there is an accident severity, right? So there is an accident severity. And you can see that, for example, say the number of uh, injuries. So I will say that I want slight injuries and serious injuries. I'll press OK. OK. This will show the number. For, and let's say that I want to go. Let me go and bring the accident um, uh, accident year, accident date and time. And I want, let's say that I will filter it for 2019. So now I have 12 collisions. So the answer to question number 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 uh sorry what happened let me just see, scroll down here number four uh that it says and no sorry number three that says that report on the number of the people collision the report on the number of collisions involving an injury is 12. this question is asking about number of sorry just number of collisions and it's 12. but the next question is asking me about the number of the people injured in one injury collision, there could be multiple people who were injured. So I cannot put 12 there. We need to do another thing. And that's why I want to have this segue to teach you another item. There is on the menu on the left, you can see collisions, and there's one other tab, it's called people involved. And if you open that one, it will show you another view of the collisions. It shows the Joe ID location, the accident number, and the people who were involved there. So, for example, let's take a look at this one, this accident. And you can see that in this accident, you see the accident number is constant. These two, they are belonging to this one. It, it provides the both the driver and other person who was involved there. And I think this is a kind of a passenger that who was there and it was fatal. So that driver hits, you see, this is the collision that we reviewed together. That 80 years old male driver hit the fem, uh, male 37 and it was a fatal, so and it was going too fast. Do you remember this collision 4604 at the end, the, the last number? So you can see that one. So it brings all the people there. So in order to get the number of the people who are injured, I need to go ahead and, for example, filter based on the year 2019. And then I will go on here, I will say that injury type, and then I will put the injury type to the seriously injured and slightly injured. And if I go down here and I look at the, the count, now I have 10 people who were uh, injured in those collisions. So the answer to these questions is 10. So this, tape, this view, the people involved, is really important for you when you want to do analysis on different people. So if I want to go and do the same thing for 2020, I can go ahead and change the accident time to 2020 and not to 2019. And now the answer to this one for me would be 24. Obviously, these numbers are not real because this you are you don't have 10 people who uh, who had injured in Nairobi. Because, because these are a sample of the data, it's not the full data. So please go ahead and do for year 2021 and write the answer for 2021. Uh, once you're done, please, uh, Dr. Timo Kesh, let me know and um, we will talk about it.
so event uh, you type some message there you are not able to see anything but can you can you elaborate what's going on what, what's your issue so i can help you while the other people are solving their their problem Thank you. 
Dr. Okech. Uh, so I think it's better to wrap up the meeting and continue the rest of it uh, in the next uh, session. What do you think? Dr. Okech, uh, did you hear me? Dr. Okish, please uh, stop at question number five. We'll cover the rest of that one later. I think uh, it's better to end this meeting and continue uh, with our meeting in the next session of the training. What do you think? I mean, I didn't, I didn't get you. I'm saying that uh, let's stop here. Uh, let's just stop here and finish by question number five and then uh, continue the training in the next meeting or over the time. I think so. Uh,
Because uh, question number six. Question number no, six. Question number six and other ones, they need explanations. We need to talk about dashboard and okay. the reports on the motorcycles. We need to talk about the dashboard. All right, question number six. All right. So I'm suggesting that it will take a little bit of time and I think we are over time. So I wanted to end the meeting, but uh, what do you think? Oh, uh, what, what I suggest is this. Eh? You 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 go through like six and then the seven quickly quickly, so that we get it and uh, then uh, try to as we go towards winding up, so that. But there uh, are more. There are more. For example, the collision intersection with higher frequency and then collision diagram. They need explanation. So and the, and we have the chart reports. Everything is going on. So it's a lot more. I think we need maybe another session for the, for the rest. Go, go, go ahead. I think, uh, yeah, some people have managed to move fast and have even done the table. Others uh, are, are still on six. But uh, you can explain the six, please. Okay. Um, just give me a second and then I'll oh, let's continue at six. Okay, so number six. So another feature of the test uh, system is the dashboard. If you if you look at my screen, can you see my screen now? Can you see my I screen? Can, I can see it, Amir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Timo Ketch, can you see my screen? Can you hear me? People can hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you see my screen? Yes, and your casa. Awesome, that's great. So another feature of the test software is the dashboard. So if you look at my screen right now, please everyone stop um, answering the previous questions. We will, we, will, we will give you some time to do those ones later on. Or, um, and I think I suggest um, so I'm suggesting that um, um, I'm suggesting that please stop solving the, uh, the problems, please listen, and then we'll give you some time. You can answer the rest of the questions uh, on your own, and then you can come and talk to us. You can talk to um, Aska or other team members from TeamCon or, or the, the dropping drop meetings, and then you can continue and you can check your answers. We will cover the questions and we'll answer the questions in the next meeting that we have. Um, so, um, um, so right now, so let me go ahead and show you in the dash in the left navigation pan, as you can see, we have a dashboard menu. And if I go to the collision dashboard, you can see I will see this in this uh, uh, this um, information available to me. Can and sorry. Just look up. Can you see my screen? So on the left, when you go to the dashboard, you can see the dashboard here. And the dashboard has three uh, tabs. Remember that every all of the pages in tests, you just go to the dashboard and you do the collision. Here's the page that you need to go there. And then you can see that there are three tabs, one overview, emphasis areas, and comparative. The overview will provide you with an overview of what's happening in your network. Essentially, you can filter based on the severity, fatal, injury, and PDO. And then it will show you the trend of the data that you have. Do you remember that the ex exercise that we did that you try to extract the number of, the, for example, injury collisions? I can come, simply come here and see, for example, and just say that, please give me the injury collisions, and it will give me the number of injury collisions in uh, in the time frame that I want. For example, 2019 and yeah. other ones. Hello, Amir. Yes. Sorry, we have a technical problem. We are not hearing you. Sorry, we are trying to resolve it. Can you hear okay, me? Okay, 
Yes, I can hear you. Please let me know when yes, you're it, ready. We had a technical problem and we lost you. We, and uh, please, let me know when, please let me know so when you are, can you where, post a where you stop. Where did it stop so I can continue from that point? It's not hearing. Can you hear me? Greg, you can hear me, right? Amir, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I mean, I can hear you. Yeah, team. We, we, I can we, hear you we, both. Now I'm talking to you through my computer. Our central system, something has happened, so we are not hearing you. I can hear you. Yes. So, That's but we can't hear you. Uh, it's only me who can hear you now through my uh, computer. And no, I understand. Can... Please, please let me know when the system is ready, and let me know uh, when uh, the cutoff was. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know shortly. Thank you very much. Okay, now let me just. Hello? Can you hear me, Amir? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, all right. Yeah, we can also hear you. So it's been resolved. So sorry, awesome. you, you start from where you started, please. We lost. We, we, we didn't get you there. When Anything? you start so, the dash I... Okay. So, I, so initially I said that uh, please stop um, solving your questions. Uh, we will answer this one, answer the questions in our next meeting. Or if you have any questions, you can ask uh, Team Khan uh, and the team there. Later on, they will have the drop-in sessions, and you can come and ask your questions. But let's look at those questions as your homeworks, and let's focus on right now. I will teach you some other aspect of the software. So um, one of the important aspects of the test software is the dashboard. On the left menu, and you can see the navigation pad, you have one, um, let's call dashboard. And you can see that I can click on the dashboard and it will it will open the dashboard for me. So Tim can uh, Tim, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear Great. you. We can hear you well. Yeah. Awesome. So you can see that so this is the collision dashboard. And as you can see, there are three tabs here. Like any other part of the software, you usually see the tabs on top. So please or down. Please make sure that you review all the tabs. So here is the overview tab. And it will show you the information about the collisions that we have in the system and then uh, what's going on and what's not going on. And you can see that I'm able to um, I'm able to see the trend of the information. For example, this one shows the time series, the collision frequency versus the, the year. And you can see that I can, for example, easily filter the fatal collisions based on each year and it show me the fatal collisions for me. You can see that, for example, in 2019, I have three fatal collisions. And I can say that I just want to see the property damage only. And you can see once I click, it automatically updates. Or I can see that I want, uh, uh, for example, PDO and fatal. And if I, this is interactive map. If I bring my map, my mouse on top of that, you can see the information there. And I can see fatal injuries as well. And even I can filter these ones and say that, hey, I just, we were talking with, uh, Dr. Okej, and um, uh, that you may need, for example, pedestrian collision. See that how many are the pedestrian involved collision happening in your network? And how, for example, say that how many of them are fatal? And this will show you the name number of the fatal pedestrian collisions. If I want to see cyclists, then I would do the cyclists. And now, because you don't have any cyclist information, it will be empty. Same here. But, um, uh, and for example, I can say that, but you can see that you have motorcyclist PDO information. So I can simply filter it and it will show me the information about only the ones that I need. And here you can see that there is a date time period. You say that, hey, for example, I want to see it for the last year. So essentially I will go and say that I want to, from January 2020 to the, for example, to the December, uh, of 2020, uh, December of the 2020. So let me go to the December 31st of the next one, and I will see that information for the year 2020, and you can see that information is available. 
I can simply reset this one by pressing the refresh button and it will go back to uh, the original default settings. And now if here on the bottom of this chart, I can see the map of my network. And as you can see, it will start to highlight. You can see that it faded the road network and highlighted a couple of uh, intersection and road segments. And you can see that um, here, there is there are there are um, um, there are um, intersections and mid blocks that there are have lots of collisions. And you can see it on the map. And if I scroll down. I'm able to see them. For example, it shows me the top frequency road segments that they have collisions. And then if I were uh, with them, if I act as a transportation engineer, I will go and investigate these ones. I will assign people to go and visually inspect that, those areas. Then I will try to do, for example, analysis and see what's going on. And I will go and get the collisions for these intersections and then try to see what's happening. The same thing happens at the uh, you see top 10 frequency uh, intersections, and you can see that I'm able to see um, the intersections that have lots of, for example, collisions, and I can click on any of them. Let me click on this one, and it will bring me to that, to the page that it shows the information for that uh, location, shows the location of that, uh, that intersection, and I'm able to go to the collisions, and it will show me the collision that happened at that intersection and you can see that I can see the impact type, all the information about those ones, and I can even um, have some uh, interesting results here. So in order to answer question number, for example, six, I'm saying that is asking me report the number of collision collisions occurred in the following uh, years. So if I want to do go that one, I will go to the dashboard, I will go back to the um, sorry, I will go back to the dashboard collisions, and then I will go and say that I want the pedestrian collisions, right? I will se select pedestrian collisions, see that I will press coll pedestrian collisions, and I want to see that how many, what was the question? Number of pedestrian collisions occurred in the following year. So I will see that in the 2019, there were three pedestrian collisions that happened. So I will have uh, three pedestrian collisions that were there. This is, these are the PDO, and I have three, um, uh, so three um, fatal and injury collisions. So essentially, I will have answered this one as three. And for this question number seven, in the asking for motorcyclists, I will do the same thing, and I will choose here, and I will choose motorcyclists. And then I will see that for motorcyclists for 2019, I have the essentially six collisions, one PDO and one and uh, one uh, fatal collision. So I will put uh, for this one six, and that's it. So essentially, that's what's happening. And question number eight: You say that list number of top five intersection or mid block with largest number of pedestrian collisions. Simply, I will filter these ones and say that these I want pedestrian collisions. And then I will look at the map. I can see the information on the map. And here I can select the top five. For example, I will select this one and maybe a couple of these ones and these intersections. I will put it in my report for what, uh, what is the number of the, the for example, uh, the top of the, the list of the top number of the, the number of colleges, largest number of places and colleges. And I can see here, uh, it shows me the number of collisions. So I can fill that one. And please go ahead, and I think you will be able to solve these um, uh, questions. So please go ahead and practice question number six to uh, ten uh, yourself. Please stop at the question ten because question eleven needs some uh, explanation. Yeah, the good thing is that you have access to the software even at home, because you have the login. So uh, whatever you don't totally uh, get, you can go back, review, and be able to be comfortable uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, being able to extract your answer. So it's very uh, interactive, pretty easy if you have used Excel 
the filtering and all that, uh, there isn't really a hard thing that you're going to uh, do, but the whole essence of the training is just to be able to make you comfortable with the environment, know how you get in, know the information you are able to extract for your work, for a query when you are given and so on. So as you do these exercises, it's going to make that uh, much easier for you and uh, you are going to be able to be more comfortable with it. Yes. Dr. Okech, I have a suggestion. This is a little bit late. I'm not sure if you heard me before. Let me cover question number 11, the collagen diagram, and then they can do the exercise th themselves when they're working or at home and work or at home, and then uh, they can check the answers with Aska or Joseph or other people um, uh, there. What do you think of this one? Because we are already over time and it's going to be really late. All right, go ahead. That's great. So the collision diagram, if you notice that when I went to the dashboard and I went to the, uh, I went to the here, when I was on the dashboard, showing on the dashboard, I, will, I can see the uh, the highest person. Let me just clear my search and let me refresh the page again. So that we will have them um, um, uh, here. Now I have the highest number of collisions. I'll click on the first one and you can see that I can go to the tab collision and it will show me the information for the, it shows me what happened and what's, what's, what different kind of collisions I have here. I and that location, that intersection. I can select all of these ones and then click collision diagram. And what it does is that it will generate a report called collision diagram, which is a really essential part of uh, diagnosing an intersection. So I will select the from date and to date that the report is from. And I'll say that this is an intersection, it's a four way intersection. Click that one and it will generate a report which is called collision diagrams, which shows if you remember at the beginning of this one, I told you that based on the initial impact type, it shows that uh, what's happening in this network. And as you can see in this section, and if I go down there, you can see the legend, but if let's talk about this sign here and uh, talk about this one. If you notice, you can see that there was uh, this sign. Anyone, do, do you remember what was this sign for? Any answer? What kind of collision was this one? And I will give you a hint. So there was a, you see that there is arrow. The arrow means that there was a car coming and this is the direction of the car. The circle shows the, the location of the impact. And it's this one here, the, the box is showing that there was, there was a something there. There was a kind of an object there that this one hits it. And because it's a square, it means it's a car. So essentially if I go down here and look, you say that it is SMV unattended, which is that single motor vehicle. Essentially cars will hitting cars that were stopping here. So there are a couple of men, you can see that, and in the legend, if you notice here, underneath is showing the number of fatal injury and PDO. So essentially there were two PDO collisions here that they were happening here. So it seems that in this approach of this lane, at this intersection, uh, cars are keep crashing on the behind, uh, on to some cars that are uh, parked here or something like that, which means that people are parking here. Maybe there's no, no parking sign there. So uh, there isn't any no parking sign there. So maybe we need to have any no parking sign there, or maybe we need to have police officers enforcing no parking here, or maybe there's uh, uh, something else happening here. So we are able to diagnose this one. So this collision diagram is a really important tool for you to be able to see and investigate the system there. Um, the other part of this uh, collision, uh, sorry, let me go back to the uh, uh, to the um, emphasis areas, to the next next tab of this one. These are the emphasis areas that I talk in this meeting. If you remember, the, what are the number of the intersection for collision that happened in the intersections? What is the number of the pedestrian collision that happened? Cyclists and all these ones, and I can filter it based on fatal injury PDO, and I'm able to select dates and times that I want, the time window that I want these ones to happen and check it and try to compare the information. As always in any of the charts that you can see in the system, 
you can click and I can, you can export it as PNG, JPEG, PDF, and you're able to do that one. I can select the emphasis areas that I want to. For example, I can see that I need these emphasis areas. Just I'm only interested, for example, aggressive drivers, old drivers, and young drivers. And then I can export this information and, for example, get, download it as a PNG. And for example, you can see that it will give me an uh, image. And I can, you see, I can include this image in a Word document or my report that I want to, uh, to do. And the other part that is really interesting is the comparative. Let's say that you will implement some policy. You want to, for example, do some training for young drivers. And you want to see what happened. So, for example, in between 2015 and 2019, you didn't have that policy. And then after 2000, for example, 20 to 2021, 20, you introduced that policy. And you want to see what your policies or what you did on your network affected. This chart will compare uh, the emphasis areas before and after. So it essentially shows you that, for example, you are, uh, by the policies that you made, you increased the number of intersection collisions from, for example, 19 to 30, but you were able to reduce the number of the uh, pedestrian collisions. Although you were able to reduce the number of the PDO property damage uh, on the uh, pedestrian collisions, but unfortunately the number of the uh, fatal and injury collision from 23 increased to 30. So that's not improvement. And you can see here, and I was discussing, it's showing that the intersection uh, intersections collisions, you had a setback of 58%. The before value was 19, but after screen, value was 30. Your screen is not showing that. It's, it starts at intersection details. So the, the, the comparison is not showing. Um, yeah, now we are seeing that. So where did you stop? So did you see this chart when I was describing this chart? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can see it. So it must be something about the uh, internet there. I see their internet is going down, Greg. Yeah, I agree with you. So what's going on, uh, Tim? Where did you see the collision diagrams that I was trying to describe? I cannot hear you. You saw that one. Did you see the emphasis areas that I talked about the emphasis areas? Uh, yeah, but we had also talked about them before. Yeah. Yes, I understand. No, this. Just I, open the, the, the comparison. Yes, comparisons. Okay. So the comparisons, um, okay, the comparisons as I talked, and I think you maybe heard me, is showing the number of B, so you can try to select the before period, you can see, I can select the after period. And then you can see that we have, it compares the number of collisions before and after. And you can see that, for example, I want to compare the, the time period between 2015 and 2019 with the last two years, essentially from 2020. And maybe I introduce a policy. And you can see that the number of the uh, uh, pedestrian college intersection collisions there were 19 collisions there increased with 30 and you, you can see underneath I have a chart that is like a gauge and it shows me that hey there was 58 percent setback so number of intersection uh, collisions were up the before value was 19 but the after value is 30 30 and then but for the pedestrian collisions the number of the collision that I had before was 58 and now the after value is 43. So I am I did good job and it's green and it, I had 26% improvement. That's great. I was able to do that one. But if I look at the chart accurate, accurately, I can see that I reduced the PDO uh, percent collisions, but I was not able to reduce the in phase on injuries. The fatal and injury section was 23, but here, the uh, here, the um, after that time period, the 30 is 30 number of the fatal and injuries. And that's something that I may need to look and say that, oh, the policy that introduced it reduces uh, the total number, but it caused more uh, fatal injuries. So I need to be doing that one. And for the I'll other, I'll other jump parts. In. I'll jump in. I'll jump in, Amir. I think we need to wind up. A little bit, and I have a few things to be able to mention. So yeah, that's that's all. That's all. That's that's my done. So then it will be for other cyclists and motorcyclists. And as I said, you can export these ones as PDF. I can export it as PDF. 
and then I can have this information available ready to me and I can inc include it in my uh, reports. I think that's all. Please go ahead after this meeting. Please go ahead and solve this one, these questions as a homework. And then um, we will, we, you can have a session with uh, the kind of the training sessions with the other members of the team con and ASCA and other team members will and team will be able to help you to set up and fix these ones. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this session was informative for you, and I hope that uh, to, with uh, together with each other's help will build um, a better and safer um, um, uh, roads for everyone, especially in Kenya. Thank you very much for your attention. Everybody stand up just one minute and then sit down as we close. Let the blood flow. Good, 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 good. Just stand up a little bit and then let, let the blood flow a little bit in your leg as we close. Good, good, good. You can... If you want to stretch, you can. It's all right. All right. Uh, you, you feel free to sit down, please. So uh, uh, we, we, we really appreciate the fact that uh, you are able to come in uh, for the training today. Uh, our team passed out, distributed two forms. One, evaluation of uh, the course. Please do your best to have this field so that we know. Uh, we do, of course, apologize. We should have started this course in the morning, but unfortunately we are not able because of the time difference. We find it is possible to just come from around one o'clock uh, because uh, the guys in Toronto started at uh, six. The gentleman in Vancouver actually started at 3 a.m. Uh, so quite a sacrifice, but uh, in uh, August, uh, the team will be here and we'll be able to start uh, in the morning and uh, be able to go at a reasonable pace. But thank you very much for your patience Thank you for going through with us. Now, there is the other form, which is called Advanced Training Needs Assessment. This course is meant to give you an overview, an overview of what is taking place, how you can quickly get your information. But for those who there is a need to be able to drill further, we are going to use the information you provide on this form then to be able to see how we can structure the more advanced training. Amir has been talking about uh, collision diagrams. He is talking about before and after analysis. So these are some of the things that we could cover more in the detailed road safety uh, 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 course uh, with a bit of engineering uh, 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 tinge into it. And so whatever you provide for us in this form will be so important for us to be able to know how we are going to proceed to provide the more advanced training that uh, we plan to undertake. As you can see in one of those last questions, we, we, we are talking about uh, things like uh, a crash data analysis, collisions analysis, which include collision diagrams, road safety audit assessments, economic appraisal. All those things are in this test thing. And uh, as part of uh, the, 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 the compliance that was required from NTSA and Kenna, this software had all those things. So we are able to teach, we are able to show, but you, we can go for a very long time. So please give us information that will be relevant to us to see how we will move forward and structure, like even what is in that collision diagram. How do you tie to other traffic engineering concepts? Like, okay, you're talking of signals design, what and what, all those things, we can connect them in a more detailed uh, training. But this was a nice overview. So please fill the form. They will be very, very important for us. And then we'll see how to move forward uh, in the next uh, area. 
So, in closing, I'll still invite uh, Dr. Kibogong to say one or two things uh, as we close and uh, call it a day. Thank you so much, Tim, and uh, um, all the participants who have joined us for this afternoon session. Um, the team of consultants, Tess, Tim Con, those who are with us here, and those who are out. Um, uh, the camera is where? Uh, and those who are um, out of the country. So uh, I think we are coming to the end. I will, before probably close, I'll ask my colleague, Engineer Ogut, to see if she can say one or two. Uh, um, so, Engineer Ogut, if you don't mind, you can say something. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a very interesting session. I only wish that um, the participants would have had a moment to ask a question or two. Normally it's good when it is interactive. Uh, one of the challenges uh, we faced was that um, you're dealing with an expert who understands the IT process, you know. From point A, he moves to point B. From point B, he moves to point C. And I want to believe that um, as he went through those phases, even us who are engineers, we got lost somewhere. So I can imagine those who don't have experience in that sector, what happened to them. But uh, all, said and, all said and done, I think we have a session in August when the trainers will physically be available and we can then have an interactive question where then they'd be able to explain. For example, my colleague would ask me, what is a road segment? What is a junction? For the engineers, we'll understand that. For those who are not engineers, they may not understand. So I would have expected that at least a brief um, explanation would have helped the, the others who are not engineers to actually understand what we are going through. Otherwise, the presentation was very good. If you understand, and you need to practice to be able to uh, do what? Practice makes perfect to be able to work the way. He was called what? Ped? Pedrom. Yes, the way he was presenting. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, engineer. Um, I think in the spirit of what she's just said that um, uh, maybe Tim will allow me to ask the team here to if they have one concern, one question, one comment, compliment about this training. Uh, I know they are filling the forms, but nevertheless, I think it's important to have uh, one or two. And I'm told Peter, Peter Kirukmet. Thank you very much. Mine is uh, something I notice on your navigation tool. The one, the navigation tool for Vatic going up and down and the horizontal. It's poor for the user, especially the vertical one. So enhance that vertical uh, navigation tools so that if you, you want to go to maybe somewhere on your right or on your left or up or down, you don't have to sweat. Yes, anyway. Thank you very much. I thought, I, had, I thought it was my computer, actually, because I had to really squeeze it to be so small. But IT guys are here and the, the team, so I think that is not it. I'm sure. any, any other small comment? We are, need to wrap this up. If none, I think um, uh, on behalf of NTSM, I would like to say thank you so much. Um, the sessions, you'll be having your passwords and uh, the link, and it's important that you sit down and really go through. You have also the notebook which is next to you. Please try to learn and, and, and navigate and, and, and try to play around with the data, play around with the graphs, see what it can generate. And, and the team of the consultants here would be very ready to listen to some of the comments. If we'll not have any comment on this, then it tells us that I don't think we understood. So we really want to understand. 
uh, to understand it fully and apart from understanding is ensure that all what we want out of this particular project comes into fruition. Now, um, so, so that is on that. Uh, possibly we'll have some more training. I know the team from Canada will be here sometimes later this year. But nevertheless, I really encourage all of us to fully understand the system. This is the system which we are going to put in place. We would hope before the end of December 2022, we'll have this thing up and running. And we, it's a national project. And all of us here will be the drivers of this. So any suggestion, however stupid you may think it is, bring it up. You'll be surprised that is what is going to dramatically um, you know, improve the project. Otherwise, from me and on behalf of NTSA, Director General NTSA, Nataka Kusama, thank you so much and have a safe and beautiful evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate uh, the fact that you took the time and you have been patient with us all this time uh, over the course of the, the, the training. And uh, NTSA is uh, uh, the, the uh, engine of this project, NTSA, working with the police and Kenna. So we very much appreciate and uh, value your feedback uh, that is going to make this thing a success. So in appreciation also for you are being here, being able to sit all this time, I think Brian, Brian had some things to show on the screen. Oh, okay, so certificate of completion. Who is Alice? Oh, there, thank you very much, congratulations. If it were not the time of COVID, I would have asked you to come and shake my hands. Uh, congratulations so much, Alice. Edith, uh, Edith is over there. We just uh, congratulate you so much. Uh, we have the certificates, they're still electronic, but we are going to have them printed and uh, eventually uh, given to you. Thank you so much, Aska. Oh, okay, Aska, congratulations for uh, attending this online. Asumta, congratulations, Asumta. Thanks so much for coming and being part of this uh, collisions module. Bernard, online. Thanks, Bernard, for attending. Brenda, congratulations, Brenda. We appreciate you. Uh, Crystal, Crystal, congratulations wherever you are for attending the course. Dr. Duncan Kibogong, thank you very much. Thank you for being able to uh, be with us over this time. Engineer Christina Good, thank you so much for attending. We appreciate you. Evans, Evans, online. Okay, Evans, wherever you are, congratulations. Gaylene. Oh, there she is. Congratulations for attending the course and completing George online. Oh, this is the DG, and the DG was attending online. We really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Jacob. There, okay. Congratulations, congratulations. And uh, Joel, Engineer Joel is right here. Uh, Congratulations very much for attending the course, Joyce, online. So we appreciate you, Joyce. Congratulations, Kelvin. Congratulations, Kelvin, for uh, attending. Maloba, online. Thank you, Maloba. Congratulations, wherever you are. Mark. Mark is also okay, online. Congratulations, Mark. Marianne. Online, congratulations, Marianne, for attending. Mukami. Oh, Mukami was online as well. Congratulations, Mukami, for attending this. And Nashon, Nashon also was online. Congratulations for attending the course and completing. Nicholas. Congratulations, Nicholas, for attending and completing the collisions module course. Yvonne. Congratulations, Yvonne, for uh, attending and being patient and during up to this time in the course. Congratulations. Peter, congratulations. Just next, Yvonne. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank God it's still electronic. We are going to correct it 
We are going to check again and make sure that it is correct. Thanks so much, Peter, for being with us the entire time. Good, good, good. Phyllis. Congratulations, Phyllis. We appreciate it. Uh, the fact that you have been with us throughout. Thank you. Samuel. Online. Wherever you are, Samuel. Congratulations, Stella. Congratulations, Stella, for being with us this afternoon and completing the course. Tita, Tita, Tito. Congratulations, my brother, for uh, doing this and finishing. Andrew. Andrew, online. Wherever you are, Andrew, if you are hearing us, congratulations for attending the calls. Yes, but last and not least, I also want to thank our staff, Tim Kwan staff, who are here with us, running around and uh, ensuring that uh, we worked out uh, things well. I believe you also have the certificates for the Tim Kwan staff who are learning. Oh, oh okay. They were there at the other time. Okay. So they have learned this twice. So thanks so much. Do you want to come just in front quickly? Tim can start so that we finish up. Investors who are helping us in the maintenance, they're part of the project team uh, as uh, experts. So we appreciate you, Ken and uh, Festus. Ken, Ken. That is Ken Digo, and then Festus, Festus Okumu. Thank you very much. Then we have Zane. Zane is uh, an intern with us. We have three interns actually working with us. Uh, all of them uh, just finished their engineering courses. Zane uh, finished, and uh, we have Evelyn. Evelyn also was doing a program in China. She just finished a degree in China. And then we have uh, Mary Joy. Also, was doing uh, civil engineering in the University of Nairobi, just finished uh, with us. So, we are very grateful uh, for you being here. We have Aska. Aska is uh, her principal assistant in the project, working very hard to ensure many times you'll see the emails are from her. We appreciate you. We have Brian. Brian Jobita uh, is uh, one of our, our statisticians and very, very involved in the, in the, in the, in the program. And uh, we have, last but not least, Anne. Anne is our administrator, and she's been busy coordinating so many things in the background. So we very much appreciate you. Thank you for working so hard to make sure that this has come to a, a, a success. Thank you. So we do appreciate. I believe that we are going to meet again uh, as we go into the next levels of the course. I did notice from uh, Engineer Good that maybe there might have been other people also who wanted to attend. So we are going to do our best to ensure that uh, uh, we make it possible for the, uh, them to be able to attend. We are here available. So if you have anything, any questions, please contact us. Feel free to take your time and learn this. The more you interact with it, the better it will be. So you can always send us a question. Again, as Tess mentioned, uh, there will also be... Uh, they are available also online, and uh, we are going to have like a drop-in session when they are available live, and uh, you can always interact and ask them. And then we'll also be posting videos, YouTube videos on tidbits of doing this, doing this, and navigating through the system. But our advanced uh, course is going to target some of the more technical aspects of this. We appreciate the comments that we got we are having a log of all the comments and we are trying to see how we can improve on the things. Thank you for your patience for being here from 12 until now. We very, very much appreciate. I'd like somebody to volunteer and close for us with a word of prayer. Okay. Thank you so much, engineer. Okay, let us rise up for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, the creator of the events and the earth, we come before you this evening to say thank you so much for answering to our prayers by leading us safely throughout this session. We pray for the knowledge we have gained. We pray that you may give us the determination to put, it in, put them into practice. Continue to inspire us, Lord, that we may be proficient and diligent in the service we give to your children. 
as we learn through all these systems. We thank you for all the teams and the stakeholders involved in this program. May you continue to prosper us to greater heights. As you're going to depart from this place, may your presence go with us. Above all, may you prepare us for your second coming. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our righteousness. Amen. And sorry, we will put the recording of this meeting uh, on YouTube as well. If you want to review and you have any questions about this one, uh, you can review on uh, YouTube as well. I think Tim Khan will distribute the link to this video to you as well. Thank you very much.